Well, you got to feel sorry for this generation of kids for many reasons, really, but especially because this is the first generation of children who will know what it's like to be raised by social media influencers. They're the first who will experience the trauma of having their childhood's mind for TikTok content. So take, for example, the four-year-old daughter of TikTok influencer Kat Kalamani, whose social rejection by the neighborhood kids was immediately converted into content by mommy. Kat has made, somehow, headlines this week after issuing a, to use the New York Post phrase, heartfelt plea to other parents on the platform. The Post reports how a tearful and devastated mother witnessed her child being bullied and, and responded how any loving parent would by leveraging the incident for internet clout. So here is the emotional video, which has garnered over 2 million views, by the way, which was totally not the point, I'm sure. It was not the point of getting views, but uh, here it is. Parent and have kids. I need your help. Why is parenting so hard? My daughter's four and has these little girls around her neighborhood who I thought she got along great with. Well, I looked out the window and I saw a couple of the girls putting their hands out like they didn't want to play with her. And so I walked over there and they were telling me she's not allowed to play with them because they didn't want her to. She was devastated. She was crying and asking me why her friends don't like her and why she can't play with them. I didn't even know how to respond. I just said, everyone sometimes makes mistakes and sometimes people aren't feeling the best and then they treat other people not so nicely. And you can't control that. And when you are around people who are not so nice, it's just best to walk away because you can't control them. How do you handle situations like this with your children? Well, not like that. She didn't know how to respond. She, she didn't know how. So instead, she took out her phone, shot a selfie video, then edited it, and put sad piano music in the background, and then posted it. And then started furiously responding to the supportive comments, all while her daughter, presumably, stood by sobbing, having now been ignored by both her friends and her mom. But it's really... It's the music which does it for me. That, that's what does it. It's, you, 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 that's what destroys any chance that this was like an authentic, I'm reaching out for help. You're taking the time to pick out the emotional music to go along with it. No. Let me ask you something. What if there was uh, someone out there who kept a log of every single thing you did every minute of the day? I think that would be pretty creepy if that was the case. Well, what if I told you that's exactly what happens every time you go online? Your internet provider like uh, AT&T or Comcast is allowed to store logs of every website you've ever visited, and they can legally sell this data to anybody they want. That's why I always use ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN reroutes your internet connection through their secure server, so your internet, pro internet providers uh, can't see or log what you do online. Now, many of you might be wondering, well, if I'm routing all my data through a VPN, then doesn't that mean that the VPN can see what I'm doing and they can log my data instead? Very astute. Well, here's what I'll tell you. You're right to think that way. Many VPNs claim to have a no-logs policy, but they've been caught logging customer activity anyway. ExpressVPN is the only VPN I trust because they use trusted server technology. And you don't have to take my word for it or ExpressVPN's word for it. ExpressVPN is so confident in their no-logs claim, they even had one of the biggest assurance firms audit their technology. Stop letting people keep logs of what you do online. Visit expressvpn.com slash Matt Walsh Show right now and find out how you can get three months free. Now, of course, even apart from the clout chasing, the problem with the video is that it's histrionic and absurdly melodramatic. It, it, look, it's really not a big deal at all when little kids tell other little kids that they don't want to play with them. That's how little kids are. They're quite fickle as a community, okay? Four-year-olds in particular are prone to just like casually stabbing each other in the back for no discernible reason. It's extremely common for kids that age to play together nicely for a while, only for one to suddenly run out of the room and snitch on the other, trying to get him in trouble based on real or imagined crimes. And the amazing thing, though, is that they can go right back to being friends after that. The betrayed child doesn't hold anything against his betrayer. He doesn't even look at the other kid and say, what the hell, dude? I, I thought we were cool. What are you doing? No, he, he, he knows the rules, and he accepts them. They all accept tattletaling as inevitable. It's, it's a custom among their people. They all understand this. And the same goes for incidents like what Cat witnessed. A child will want nothing to do with another child one minute, only to be pronouncing her a best friend the next. And in fact, girls don't grow out of that habit until like in their mid-70s. But the point is that kids experience hurt feelings, betrayals, rejections all the time. 
They'll be utterly devastated for 45 seconds, and then they forget about it. And you can even shorten that 45-second period of sadness by giving them candy or a sticker or a Band-Aid. Kids love Band-Aids. You can heal almost any wound, physical or emotional, with a Band-Aid. And if it's a physical wound, the Band-Aid doesn't even have to be on the part of their body that has the wound. The other day, my, my daughter had a small cut on her, on her hand, but insisted that we put a Band-Aid on her elbow. Again, these are the ways of childhood. We can never fully understand it, even though they were once our ways too. Does this mean that we should never take our children's emotions seriously? No, it just means that we shouldn't blow things out of proportion or create drama where it's not necessary. There's no need to make mountains out of molehills, and we especially should not be making TikTok videos out of them. Because that is really the problem here. You know, the world has always had mothers who get far too emotional and upset about the most minor pains or difficulties their, ch their children suffer. I mean, every good mother has a tendency in that direction to one degree or another. That's why it's important to have both a mother and a father in the home. The mother has enough empathy to compensate for the father's occasional deficiencies in that regard, and the father has enough calmness and rationality to compensate in the other direction. That's the complementary nature of the sexes saving the day yet again. But Kat's problem is really not an overabundance of empathy or emotion. Her problem, if anything, is the opposite. Her emotion is a performance for the camera. You know, she saw her daughter's sadness as a thing to be exploited, a piece of content for public consumption. She claims in the video that the incident just happened a moment ago, which means that almost immediately the thought occurred to her that the whole thing would make a good TikTok video. It's not natural to think that way. It shouldn't be anyway. It's not surprising, though, when this generation of parents, my generation, views moments in life, or really all of life itself, through this lens. Many of us have been conditioned to put all of ourselves out there for viewing, making spectacle of even the most banal moments and experiences. But not everything needs to be presented to the public in this manner. And I say that as somebody whose job necessitates talking into a camera for over an hour every day. One of the reasons why we should retain some semblance of a private life for ourselves, and especially for our children, is that the internet is not a good substitute for a trusted confidant or counselor. If you really feel that you need to vent your frustrations, or you need to, a shoulder to cry on, or you need some wisdom and guidance, the comment section of TikTok is by far and away the absolute worst place to turn. Faceless strangers who are scrolling social media looking for content to distract them from their own personal lives are not suited for any of the roles I just listed. They also don't know you or care about you. And they will have forgotten about what you posted five seconds after they see it. But the bigger problem is that when, when, you, when you get into the habit of packaging your life into these bite-sized videos and social media posts and offering them up as pieces of entertainment for strangers, who will then in return give you a rating through likes and shares, which you will obsessively track and count, when you do all that, and you do it every day for years, as so many people do, after a while you begin to lose the ability to live your life as a normal human being. You forfeit your humanity to a large extent. You begin to think about all of your experiences in terms of how many likes they can get. You start engineering things in your life so that they'll be better fodder for an influencer post. You live your life with your back turned to it, looking at it through your phone with your face in the foreground and everything else blurred into the background. We now have multiple generations of Americans who live this way, constantly sacrificing authenticity for the sake of making content until they no longer know how to live authentically. So Kat Kalamani is far from alone, but she is the one who is today, unfortunately, canceled. Well, before you go, uh, hit the subscribe button and ring the bell. And while you're at it, if you want to go watch or listen to my full show, head to dailywire.com and subscribe. You can also catch my show on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. So go check it out now. I demand it. Your compliance is somewhat appreciated.